possible side effects for staying out in the desert. Sunburn, heat stroke, and a bad case of the cannibals. What's going on guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about the 2000 remake of Those of Eyes, which was directed by Alexander Aja and stars Ted Levine, Don Byrd, Emily Day Raven, and Aaron Stanford. And it follows a suburban American family who takes a road trip through the New Mexico desert where they fall prey to a group of murderous cannibals. This is, of course, a remake to the original 1977 classic of The Heels of Eyes, who was then directed by one of my all-time favorite directors, Wes Craven, who is no longer with us. May you rest in peace. The Heels of Eyes 2006 remake, I was really satisfied with how they went with it. Starting off with the positives, I loved the look and feel of this film. The whole thing was set in the New Mexico desert, so it was really, really dry. Kind of had that Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibe a little bit. The story was done very well. It was just about this family who just decides to take a road trip to California, but in order for them to do that, they go through the New Mexico desert because of this gas station attendant who kind of lures people towards these cannibals. It was really good. It was, it was your basic, typical horror scenario. And as soon as the madness starts, by the time the third act happens, there's no turning back. It's all down the hill for the characters from then on. Because this whole film is set in the middle of nowhere. What's more perfect for a horror film scenario than that? There's great character development. Ted Levine played a character named Big Bob Carter. And I gotta say, I've seen him in other things. He was in Silence of the Lambs as Buffalo Bill. I thought he did a good job in that. I hadn't seen that film in a while, but I do remember scenes where he was in it. So in this film, he just plays the father, a family man. And at one point, he started singing when it was showing them go through the desert before the tires blew out. And I could swear, he's got like a country-like voice. He could be a country singer. I thought he did a really good job with his character. Brenda and Bobby Carter, who's played by Emily Day Raven and Don Byrd, they did a pretty good job as well. They played the kids who tries to take action and tries to hold down the floor while the others go out and try to look for... Like the rest of the family members that's gone missing. They were brother and sister, of course, so they, they worked well as a team. Aaron Stanford played a guy named Doug Pukowski. At first, he was kind of a jerk, which it kind of flips on you because he becomes real useful really fast. And he plays a family man. He's got a kid of his own. There's like real tension set up because there's a baby thrown into this film. And I thought that gave the movie that push that it needed. But Aaron Stanford, I thought he did a really good job with his character. He really held out his end. And the part of the story that really gets me is the side plot. The U.S. government was testing nuclear bombs back in the Cold War. And these people just happened to be in the way. They were asked to leave, but they wouldn't budge. Which makes this kind of tragic because when they set off the nuclear bombs, it affected these people and made them into cannibals. Into these crazy, psychopathic, murderous cannibals. And that's kind of tragic when you think about it. And as for their cannibals... I'm just going to chalk their motivation up to good old-fashioned revenge as the reason why they're doing what they're doing now. Speaking of the cannibals, they were awesome. There's this one huge dude. His name was Pluto. He was played by Michael Bailey Smith. He, he was like the muscle. And this dude had to, be, had to be like six foot tall. About the same height that Michael Myers and the Rob Zombie's versions was. The dude was huge. And it was hard to get that freaker to die. And it's like, damn, there was this other one named Lizard, who was played by Robert Joy. He seemed like he was the leader of it. Like, even though he was the scrawny one, he was very sadistic. You wouldn't want to mess with this guy. You wouldn't even want to make contact with this guy. Otherwise, you'd be dead. But he was very sadistic, and he brought a very powerful performance to this character. And all the rest of the cannibals was creep-tastic. There's plenty of carnage candy in this film. The gore and the blood and guts and everything was just done really well. The score was great. It had that sort of a rock vibe when something bad was getting ready to happen. You knew something was getting ready to happen because it had that rock vibe to it. 
The look and feel of this film was fantastic. The whole thing was set in the desert, away from civilization. How much more of a perfect horror scenario can you get? I honestly have no negatives about this film. I thought this was a really good, enjoyable horror flick. My final thoughts, it is a fun ride. It is a fun, gory, bloody, slashy ride for any horror fanatic out there. I'm giving Hills of Eyes 2006 remake an A+. What did you think of Hills of Eyes 2006? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Leave me that comment down below and let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. Like, subscribe, and get review tops. And share this video, too. Like this video, because that helps my channel and that helps my videos. Stay tuned for more videos and reviews coming soon to a computer screen or a cell phone near you. Peace the rip out.